But what I wanted to do is kind of just do a, a recap about uh, some things that are uh, a little bit more basic, but is foundational to Google Ads. So we're talking about converted tracking, bidding strategy, budgets, campaign types, audiences, all the good stuff. Here's something that I think should be a foundational kind of core memory for everyone here, a core alert. Let's look at the first thing that we want to check is conversion tracking. What is being counted as a conversion? Is it appropriate? And is it the best way to track that? And you'll know uh, the reason why I'm using this one is it's not. This was not set up correctly. So today we're going back to basics. So we have a lot of new hires coming. We have a lot of new hires that are in here. Um, and so what I wanted to do is kind of just do a, a recap about uh, some things that are uh, a little bit more basic, but is foundational to Google Ads. So we're talking about converted tracking, bidding strategy, budgets, campaign types, audiences, all the good stuff. And I think it's going to be good to kind of get everyone on the same page just so that we're more aligned with their overall strategies. So going kind of back to basics is not, it's, you know, well, I guess solutions, a basics, which is like every other agency is like a next level. Um, but it is going to be a, a really good way for us to, um, us to kind of round table and be all on the same page in terms of how things work, how we see them work, how they expect to work. Uh, what the client's needs are, how we um, set up campaigns to achieve those goals, whether it's lead generation or e-commerce, uh, and some best practices, housekeeping items, et cetera. So I'm going to dive right in. <clears throat> um, I have a campaign pulled up here, and this is a campaign that's of an active client and an active client that we're doing really, really well for. And I wanted to kind of share with you a structure that I think goes against what we will say sometimes potentially internally and uh, some results thereof. So, and then also talk about some of the whys. So for example, this client looks to be really, really good. It looks like this conversions are scaling up. Um, YouTube is performing really well. We've got 324 leads the last you know, 30 days, hundred dollar cost lead is lower than the camp, uh, the, than the account average. Um, and this looks good. Now, when I'm saying back to basics, one of the first things I want to measure is performance tracking. When I look at, what is uh, being counted, how it's being counted, and for what source is being counted, and can we make any sort of optimizations there? It's going to be the first step to any success of any Google Ads campaign because conversion tracking is the lifeblood of any automated bidding strategy. If we don't have this, we're going to be stuck with manual and interpretation. So that's you know 2008 Google Ads. This is obviously 2022. So let's look at the first thing that we want to check is conversion tracking. What is being counted as a conversion? Is it appropriate? And is it the best way to track that? And you'll know uh, the reason why I'm using this one is it's not. This was not set up correctly. So the first thing I look at is segment by conversion action. What's currently being counted in the, in the campaign? We could do a, a review of our own accounts, and this is going to be very important when we take over new accounts. If we skip this step, we set ourselves up for failure. So what you can see here is I'm only counting one of the, I don't even know, 13 conversion actions here on the page. Now, why? Is because I'm using an automated bidding strategy for every single one of these campaigns, except for the brand. <clears throat> that is going to allow me to um, optimize the campaign along with Google for the type of sales or leads that I would like. So one thing that's really important is making sure that the conversion action that you want as the end goal be the conversion action you're counting and possibly solely the conversion action that you're counting. There is some use cases to say otherwise. Um, however, I've usually found it the most beneficial and concrete and, and foundational to go after the conversion action you want as the end goal. What I mean by that, if we're looking for a specific type of lead, maybe don't start with counting all of the, uh, let's say, you know, catalog downloads, because that's not the type of lead we want. We want people that are filling out the design tool and actually submitting. So that's a good example here. I'm still going to count them in a conversion, but in the all conversions, and I'll share that with you here in a moment as a secondary conversion. So we're looking at the download of the RTA catalog. I have three here, and there's very, very little. Why? I used to have a lot more. I used to have, this is usually about 30 to 40 per month, but I only counted the design tool submissions, and that's actually what I'm basing all my, my optimizations on. Why is this important? Well, I'm still getting 42 people a month in this one campaign filling out the contactless form, and I'm getting two phone calls, but I'm only counting the design tool submission, and that is what you can see is the highest. That's getting the most amount of activity. 
So you use your conversion counting off of two reasons. One, a guide as to how you see that campaign performing, but also B, what you're teaching it. That's the difference between a secondary and a primary conversion. Secondary, I can see it. I'm not counting it though against the bidding strategy. That'd be primary. That's what the campaign's optimizing for. So making sure that you're counting only the conversion actions that you want and that you have verified with the client, that's what they want is gonna be step one. Now we look at, well, how are we counting these conversion actions? What is the source? And I'd like everyone to go off mute if you're if you're wanting to uh, if you're wanting to um, to chime up. But what do you see here is is an issue right off the bat? Does anybody know? Google Analytics as a conversion source. That's right. So Frank nailed it. It's a conversion source coming from analytics. Does anybody know why this is bad? Analytics drops <clears throat> on average about 20% of the of the users when it's tracking them. Yep. So analytics will drop off sometimes all the way up to about 60%. I've had it and the 60% wow. difference. Google Analytics is the same day last click attributed non-direct network. What that means is that anybody that has a Google ads click that then has a click somewhere else that is not direct, it is going to not give credit back to the Google ads channel that may have started that conversion. So if you have a person that Googles a cold traffic keyword, goes to the website, leaves, comes back by Googling the brand name and clicking organically, analytics will say, we had an organic conversion today, it is not paid ads. So paid ads does not get a credit from analytics for the job that it did. So my conversion actions inside this account are missing. I might be missing, you know, 200 to 500 conversions this month. Now we know this, we already had a, this particular use case hired, measurementmarketing.io, the rebuilding everything else, cost like 7,500 bucks, bucks, they're redoing the website, yada, yada, yada. But that's a fail point, and I know that fail point. So what do we do instead? We confirm the actual lead amount with the client. And then we also support ourselves by looking through analytics. Analytics can tell us if someone clicked on Google ads and then click through another path. That could be another time from their day. I don't want to make this an analytics how-to, but know that analytics can tell you the model comparison tool, which is the first and last click. And you can actually kind of deduce for yourself what you may be missing. So <clears throat> that's the that's the first thing is we always want to use Google tag or even just the actual conversion event on the thank you page, but it should be the conversion source being a website. To share this in a more extreme scenario, here's what I mean by this. If you're running e-commerce and you're using analytics and you already know that this company has a fairly good brand name, when you count it as uh, a analytics, we're gonna see a whole bunch of missed opportunity because people that come back to the brand name are not gonna be counted inside of Google ads. I've purposely kept this client live with this view so I could share this as, a, as an example. But the last 30 days, uh, let me just sort this way. Look at the difference between what analytics counted as a sale and what Google ads counted as a sale. If I'm using automated bidding strategies on target return on ad spend, I'm hitting my target return on ad spend of $10,000 when in reality I brought $15,000. Or if I'm using a TCPA, I'm only counting 196 conversions, not the 353 conversions I actually got. That's the difference between analytics and Google ads. Analytics source misses all these people, why? I know that this company here already has a really good brand name, but we don't have enough budget to spend on our campaigns along with maxing out the brand name. So an analytics will say, well, people came back and Google the brand name, didn't click on a brand campaign because it's non-existent. They clicked on your organic listing, you don't get credit. This is actually the delta between the people that clicked on us and came back to the brand and uh, that's counted and did not count. That's why this is very, very, very important. So any questions from, uh, conversion tracking and sources and why they're important so far. Uh, all right, cool. Next thing, <clears throat> we wanna look at the conversion window. I think the conversion window is extremely important because if you're counting something, and I don't have this one updated because we don't have any videos, so I'm not really worried about it. But for example, when we're looking at the click through conversion window, I like to max this out as much as possible. My opinion, there's no reason to um, there's no reason to count this less than 90 days. I don't have a use case that I could not argue and usually win for a click through conversion window less than 90 days. If you're generating interest and you're generating the first click, 
And you can see that it's cold traffic campaign. The keywords are non-branded and dynamic remarketing is doing a good job of bringing them together and yada, 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 yada. You should get credit for that. Why remove credit from you? Because they took 31 days to convert, not 30. Doesn't make sense in my mind. So making sure that your click-through conversion windows are as wide as possible. Now there's a use case to say, use case to say yes, but you're going to count, you know, duplicates. So one purchase and then another purchase, then another purchase, then another purchase. That would be here where you count one conversion or every conversion. The distinction here is that if I get an ad click and one sale, it's going to count at one time. If I get an ad sale and get two sales, this will count it two times. One ad click, two sales. That's going to be indicative of returning traffic. That happens quite a bit. What I mean by that is if you're counting every conversion. And that conversion window is at 90 days. If you earn click on day one and you have a purchase on day 15, 45, 60, and 90, you're going to see four sales. Is that okay? Again, it's up to your individual campaign, your individual strategy, but just know that will happen. If you count this as one, you're going to have, have an ad click for the first time ever to your website through Google Ads. And that ad click, let's say, converts 90 days. You count that once. They convert twice, you still count it once. Unless they click on your ad again. So this just denotes the one click to how many times that person can be counted as a conversion for the next 90 days. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm rhythm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. You'll start to see some oddities though in this. And what I mean by that is if I look at, uh, I was going to go back in time and I'll share with you. So June, July, August, September, October. When I segment by uh, the days to conversion, you'll see a bell curve here. Normally, I don't even know if that's, oh yeah, you do. So you see a sort of a bell curve here. And what I mean by that is when you look at the conversions and the conversion value, see how it's 86,000 in less than one day for a total of, uh, or for 117 or 86,000 for a total conversion by time of 125. When you count something for 90 days and you count every conversion, you're actually giving yourself a bit more credit, which is okay. As long as you're not over counting, duplicate counting or taking too much credit. I don't think though, that if you bring a new customer and count what that customer is worth inside of Google, that's taking too much credit. Individual use cases may vary. But what you'll notice here is a bell curve. And I want everyone to understand this because this actually goes into effect in what we're going to be talking about next of time lag, time decay, I guess I would say. Um, and also changing around campaigns and bidding strategies and, and budgets. So here's something that I think should be a foundational kind of core memory for everyone here, a core learning, which is the bell curve. What the bell curve is, is a, um, uh, it's kind of like a reverse bell curve. You have a lot of sales come in and then a lull. And then over a course of time, the sales start to come back. If you only count to 30 days, you miss the second half of that bell curve. The first bell curve is going to be indicative of your first seven days of, of conversions for the cost. That's going to be about 80% of your transaction, maybe 70% maybe of your transactions. The additional 20 to 30% is going to come later on. And you're going to be able to identify that inside of this bell curve and also equate for that or uh, atone for that. I guess, in your bidding strategies and your budgets and your target CPAs and or target row assets. So here's what I said. Here's what I mean. $86,000 out of 125000 happened within 24 hours of the last click. What this day out here is, in, is, is, um, is representative of is the last click to the Google Ads account. So it goes from 86 down to 4, 3, 2, 1, down into 640. That's 10 or 11 days out. Now, what happens from 10, 11 days out to 11, 12, 13, 14, you start to see 640 go to 1,000, and then 2,000, 8,000, 30 to 45 days, 3,000, 1,200, 2,400. Any account in e-commerce in Google that we have, I invite you to look back four months, segment by days to conversion, and see this bell curve. Nine times out of 10, it will be there unless it doesn't have a good repeat. You know, if they're one off big expensive products, you still will see the bell curve because of delayed, delayed attribution of what they click and when they convert. But you're going to see that here. 
Now, if we're counting the 30 days, my tracking stops here. I'm missing three, four, five, six, I'm missing $7,000 out of 125,000. That goes against my ROAS, that goes against my CPA. I'm missing, I don't know, maybe this calls 65, 70 conversions. I'm missing all those here. So how you count and how long you count it are also going to help you identify what the actual conversion value is and how to make sure that that is adjusted for your bidding strategy. If this ROAS was 250 versus 288, what would you do? It's actually 288 in reality, but we're counting it as 250 because we missed on days 30 to 90. So your CPA targets are going to be higher because you have less conversions. Your ROAS target is going to be lower because you have less ROAS. All of this that you count is going to be directly affected on how you manage and, ex and, and measure your campaigns. So just know that that time lag is a factor and that is something that should be set up before you start making large daily ad spend adjustments and, and, and target bidding. That's, that's just foundational. So I want to make sure that everyone kind of has a good grasp on that. Hi guys, I'm Spruti from Solutions 8 and in this video, we are going to learn about the conversion tracking best practices for any e-commerce Google Ad account. You know, in Google Ad, conversion tracking is the foundation. If your conversion tracking is not up to the mark, then you should 